Amen. What a lovely welcome into the season of Advent. Woohoo! I love this season. It's a fabulous season. I forgot to say, welcome to worship, everyone. It's good to be with you in worship here this morning, whether you're on site or online. We worship as one community of faith. We are celebrating a new church year today. You might notice some things are different here in the sanctuary uh, from, from previously, and it's all to serve our purpose of focusing on Jesus as the coming light of the world. You probably heard me talk about our series so far, but in case you haven't, we are focusing on revelation this season. So I'm, in, I'm excited to talk to you about that because Revelation is a book that might be a little scary for some of us. Um, but we are talking about it as a book of hope. And we'll talk more about why that is in our sermon today. I'm going to invite you, as always, to take a deep breath. as we center our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, alive in the world, reviving creation, arriving soon. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, first with silent prayer. We pray, God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned. We trust earthly powers and human authority alone. We grow fearful. We cling to false comforts. God of might, we confess that we have sinned. We have turned away from our neighbors. We have trusted false promises. God in our midst, we confess that we have sinned. We plead, come to us. Bring your mercy to birth in us. A righteous branch springs forth. It is the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, in whom we have forgiveness, life, and mercy. By the power of the Holy Spirit, receive the grace and forgiveness of God through Christ Jesus, whose day draws near. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
God of grace, return us to one another. To the broken, give wholeness. To the mourning, give strength for dancing. To the grieving, give solace. Fill us with your hope and be near us now. May your eternal love spring forth from the pain and uncertainty of the world. Fill us with your peace and release our grip of control and fear. Lighten our hearts, clear our minds, burn away all that does not bring life to your people and your whole creation. Fill us with your joy and nourish us to bear good fruit in the world. Renew our hearts in you and help us look again to the day of restoration. Fill us with your love and prepare us to welcome you, O Christ, who was and is and ever shall be. I like to hire us hope in our hearts. Open us to your call to peace. Ground us in your love. our time together in God's word. Stir up our hearts in hope, O God. Clear our minds with your strength. Lighten our hearts with your love, so that we may know your nearness as you fill all people with life. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation. Amen. You all may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite the children forward for a children's message. Chloe is ready. Is Jay coming? Jay is coming. All right, we got some visiting friends today. I love it. Laurel's coming. Come on up. We're actually going to come over here today. Come on down. Well, I'm not actually going all the way up there, Chloe. Hi, friends. It's very nice to see you today. Did you know we're celebrating a new year? Woohoo! Yeah, I should have brought party favors. I did not. Uh, so, we have all kinds of different things in here, which our, our new friends don't know what's different necessarily, but do you all notice what's different around here? It's not a trick question, I promise. not getting much today. Okay, I'm just gonna talk at you then. Okay, <laughs> so snow, I don't see any snow. There's banners, yep, they're blue banners now for our blue advent theme. You might notice there's a lot of blue around. There's blue right behind you. There's blue on our table. That just tells us that it is the season of advent. And then our blue candles. Yeah, we normally have candles here, but this thing is just for this season. This is called our Advent wreath, and we only bring it out this season. There's four blue candles and one white candle, and that's because there's four Sundays in this season, okay? And you notice, how many did we light today? One. Just one, because this is our first Sunday in Advent. As we go on, we'll light, next week we'll light two, the following week we'll light three, and then the last week of Advent, we will light four. Do you know why we do that? Why do I have the white one? That's a good question. Why do I have the white one? The white one is in the middle, and that's for when we celebrate Christmas. Because Jesus is called the light of the world. So this candle reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. And you know what? The days right now are getting shorter, and they're getting darker, 
and we light more and more candles as the season goes on and it gets shorter and darker to remind us that we are going to be a part of celebrating the light of the world coming on Christmas. So you also might notice that this one is shorter than the others. I don't know if you saw that, right? This one's shorter than the others because we're reusing these candles because we want to be good stewards of our resources, which means we're um, going to reuse things rather than throwing them out. And this one's shorter than all the others because this is the one that was lit the first Sunday last year, too. So this actually helps us keep time, too. You're going to be able to see this one get shorter and shorter and shorter as we burn it for the all four Sundays. And then this one will get shorter and shorter as we burn it for three Sundays. This helps us keep time and remind us that we are so close to Jesus coming again. Is that exciting? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about Jesus coming again, too. All right, let's say a prayer. And then we have Children's Church today. Yes, Miss Katie's back. Are you so excited? I don't have any excitement today. Yes, Miss Katie had surgery on her leg, and it's healing well enough that she is happy to be back with us today, and I'm very happy that she is. Can we say a prayer together? Dear God, thank you for this wreath and reminding us that you are the light of the world, and you are the reason we celebrate this Christmas. Amen. All right, Miss Katie's here, so you can go to Children's Church. Kiddos, you're welcome to go as well, or you can hang out with your family here, whatever's more comfortable for you. All right, we are about to hear our readings, right? And uh, our first reading, quite honestly, I didn't pray a prayer, the first reading or the gospel description, because what I really want you to focus on is Revelation. Revelation is a long reading today, all right, but it is the entire first chapter of Revelation to get us set up for our series. So I want you to hear who Jesus is and what Jesus is about. As always, I'm going to invite you to listen for what God has to say to you, but those are the two things I really want you listening for. So please take a deep breath with me. as we listen to God's word. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, who shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. So we will chant Psalm 25 responsibly. Steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep. 
your covenant and your testimonies. <clears throat> the second reading is from Revelation, the first chapter. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. And he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. So it is to be, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, who share with you the persecution and the kingdom and the endurance in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Mergamon, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp, two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining with full force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Now write what you have seen, what is, and what is to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All righty.
question and answer time. I know this is your favorite. Here we go. Revelation. What do you think about Revelation? Or what do you know about Revelation? Or what have you heard? Yeah. Someone I cared about a lot used to say that, according to Martin Luther, you shouldn't read Revelation until you've memorized the rest of the Bible. That is, that is I think, true. I have heard the same thing. I have not read the actual quote on that. Uh, but what Carl just shared was, that a friend shared with them that uh, Martin Luther once said, you should not read Revelation until you have memorized the rest of scripture. <laughs> Woohoo! So, uh, let's say... Challenging. Challenging, yes. Challenging. Others? Doom and gloom, yes. Doom and gloom. Wrath. Wrath and apocalypse. Okay, wrath and apocalypse. I'm gonna put wrath up here with this, yep. Wrath and apocalypse. Anybody have a good definition for apocalypse? End of the world. Okay, that's also with doom and gloom, right? <laughs> End of the world. That's actually not the biblical definition of apocalypse. I'll get back to that. I heard something else. Mysterious visions. Mysterious visions, yes. Mysterious and scary, hence the doom and gloom. There's also hope. Hope! I love that word! Yes, hope! Yes. We don't get revelation very often in our lectionary, but what we do get is the happy parts, <laughs> which is talking about that tree with leaves for the healing of the nations. New heaven and a new earth. Try to stay away from it. Okay. We avoid it like it's the plague. Next step. Next step. Say more about that. Next step. Just what's to come that has not yet been revealed. The bad stuff and then the good stuff. Okay. What's to come? So predictive. My Bible study on Tuesday got the preview of this. I apologize. That was popping. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. All right. All right. This, and maybe this, but this for sure, is mostly why we avoid Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, it is a book of hope. The biblical definition of apocalypse is not end of the world. It is unveiling or revealing. I know this is getting kind of small. Unveiling or revealing. Which to some extent people think it's predictive of what's to come yet in our future. But I would argue that that is not the case. I have not buried the lead on this, on this series, right? I have told you up front that Revelation is a book of hope, which is a word that we desperately need in this season, right? But most of us have not read much of Revelation itself. Has anybody read all of Revelation? One, two, three, four. Ooh, we got a few. Wow, lovely. Uh, 
Yeah. Did you read with a group or by yourselves? By myself. By myself. Self. Mm-hmm. Self. Self. So. Did you understand what you were reading? Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not totally. Yeah. Okay. So, for the vast majority of us in this room, okay, most of what we know or think about Revelation is from modern culture, right? Televangelists or those cult leaders who point to some numerology in Revelation and say, this is the date of the end of the world, only to have that date come and go without incident, right? Or maybe from that all too famous series, the Left Behind books that became movies as well. No, I'm getting no's. My dad was super into Left Behind. I didn't really read it, but it was this idea of taking Revelation and the idea of the rapture, which is, you know, Jesus planning on sucking all of the faithful up into heaven before the tribulation here on earth and then the final judgment. It's not great biblical interpretation, the rapture. It's not, it's, it's, it's not what Lutherans would say is good biblical interpretation. Uh, but Revelation is not about the end of the world, or at least not in the way that most people talk about it or think about it. The book of Revelation is the most misunderstood and misused and misinterpreted book of scripture. <coughs> So how do we get it so wrong? First, in not reading it for ourselves, we allow other folks to tell us what it's about. And mostly folks that we don't agree with on other things theologically, right? Believer's baptism, whereas we practice infant baptism. Or the real presence in this bread and cup. Lutherans say that Jesus is truly present somehow in this meal that we take, which is why we celebrate it every week, because we need Jesus' presence with us. Most of the folks looking at Revelation in these ways would believe that this is just a symbolic thing. So if we disagree with most other theological points, why would we let those other people tell us what Revelation is about? Second point. Let me read a little bit back to you now to show why interpretation starts out so hard. Apocalypsis Jesu Christu en edoken auto hotheos dexai tois dulois hautu. Did you think I was swearing at you? I was not. I was reading the first part of verse 1 in the original language, which is Koine Greek, which is to modern Greek like Old English is to modern English. We're working in interpretation even as people are translating these words. And on top of that, we're reading a letter to churches in first century Palestine. Have you ever read someone else's letter? Particularly from 2,000 years ago? We actually do it all the time in the New Testament, right? But we don't really think about it usually. But I mean, even if you take letters out of your grandparents' trunk in the attic, right, and you read those letters, how much of the context of the letter would you understand or know right off the bat? What was going on during the time of the writing? What specific issues are being addressed in the letter? They might just say it, in response to something the last person wrote, and you have no idea what it is, right? And if it's from someone in a war zone written to their loved one back home, 
they're probably not allowed to write much of anything about what's going on on the ground for the safety of the unit, right? So we may have in the letter, we might have context clues, we might have codes, or we might just have nothing at all to give us an understanding of what's going on in the letter. Likewise, reading the letter of Revelation, full of historical symbolism, is difficult and often scary, making us feel lost and confused. My spouse tells the story from her childhood when in elementary school, she had ridden the bus home only to be told by the bus driver that she couldn't take her home. And further, she dropped her in the middle of somewhere she didn't know where she didn't know anybody. This is inconceivable today, both with cell phones and backpack tags tracking our child, mo child movement. But hey, this was the early 90s. As a young child, she was scared and confused and didn't know what to do and didn't know who to trust. So she just <laughs> decided she'd walk until she recognized Something familiar or someone familiar. So that's just what she did. And she found a landmark that she knew. And from there, she was able to find her way back home again. Likewise, Revelation drops us in the middle of first century conflict as described in wild, terrifying visions. <coughs> and with no one we trust to guide us, it's a scary place to be. But the purpose of this book is not to scare us. The purpose of the book, more than any other, is revealed in that first sentence, the first few words, actually. The revelation, the apocalypse of Jesus Christ. That's it. Jesus is the forefront and remains at the center of the whole book. This is not a secret code to unlock a guidebook to the end of the world. It is entirely about the unveiling of Jesus Christ. The unveiling of the consequences of his life, death, and resurrection in the world as it already is. I'll say that another way. The terrifying bits of revelation describe the world as it already is in first century Palestine. And in the midst of the terrifying stuff, Jesus is the victorious one, conquering all rulers who would use death to keep power conquering even death itself with God's life and love. The book of Revelation can still speak to us now, but we must keep our eyes trained on Jesus the whole time. It's not that there's nothing to be scared of in Revelation. It can pretty accurately describe the systems and the people who misuse power today who use the threat of violence and death to take and keep control. And all evidence points to the fact that that is a very effective strategy. <coughs> the same was true in ancient Rome. It looked like the powers that rebel against God were winning at every turn, while the Church of Jesus Christ looked like it was losing. So John wrote this letter to the churches, describing his visions. Through these visions, John gets a sneak peek behind the veil, looking at the world through heaven's eyes. And he sees the terrifying events and the beasts wielding crazy amounts of power, all as the final death throes of those who have already lost. 
they lost to the power of God in the resurrection. It's a weird way that God wins, right? Through a pregnant woman, which we'll hear about in a couple weeks, through a vulnerable baby growing to a man only to go to the cross, through love that looks like it died on that cross. Yet God is victorious through that love already and always, no matter the evidence to the contrary. So there is hope, even when we seem lost, in the middle of unfamiliar terrain, with terrifying visions all around us, violence on the news. We find our landmark, Jesus, the Son of Man who was killed and yet is alive, who holds the keys to death and Hades. We look for him through it all. And when we keep our eyes on this Jesus, we shall see his victory. Amen? Amen. together in this God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. expectation of your coming. Fill your church with renewed passion for our shared mission. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of the cosmos, all creation sings your praise. Help us sense your goodness and love in the sun and moon, in sprouting or bare branches, 
in the week. Lord, in your mercy, God of all nations, give all in authority hearts for justice and peace. Encourage efforts to enact policies that benefit the common good. Lord, in your mercy, God of change, be near to all who are experiencing transition or who are suffering, especially Dorothy, Ted, Jean, Katie, Jimmy, Loretta, Gail, Suni, Pat, Debbie, Carl, Charlotte, Brian, Jacob, Ian, Kathy and Peter S., Nicole, and the loved ones of Sally Howe. In times of change, remind us of your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, this is our prayer. God of community, your spirit holds us together. Inspire us to seek new ways to live together and to embrace the diversity of thought and identity in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, this is our prayer. God of memory, we give you thanks for faithful ones who have died. Tend to our grief and sorrow and with renewed trust in your promise of abundant and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Savior of the nations, come and receive these prayers and the pleas of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You're invited to share a sign of peace with one another.
for these and all gifts of time, talent, and treasure you give here and outside this place. We give thanks and we pray for God to use it for God's purposes. We pray. God of hope, you fill the hungry with good things. Give us hopeful hearts and open hands to receive your love and share our abundance that all may be fed. In the name of the one who sustains all life, Jesus Christ, our love. Amen. God be with you. Jesus, the bringer of peace. Hear us when we cry. Make all things new. Heal the nations. Widen and deepen the imagination of our hearts. Give us rest in you. In the night in which he was handed over, Jesus, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Place in our hearts the thrill of hope, O God, you who are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, that we may all know your restoration and love in this world and the next, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God feeds us with tender mercy. Come to the table. You may be seated for now. Communion minister, I'll invite forward to wash hands. Uh, those of you joining us online can partake of your elements, knowing that it is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Those of you joining us on site, you will be invited forward by an usher. You'll come take your place around the table uh, and receive in your bread hand. Uh, receive in your hand the bread, or let me know if you need a gluten-free wafer. 
and then a tray will come around with wine on the outside, grape juice in the center. We believe that Jesus is truly present in all of these forms of communion that we take today. Uh, if you are not able to come forward and stand, let the usher know and we'll bring you communion in your seat. If you do not wish to receive, but would like a blessing, come forward with everyone else and just keep your hands folded. But know that you are invited to this table. It is Jesus who invites you and Jesus who feeds you. So if you stick your hand out, I will put bread in it. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We pray. Holy One, you have blessed us with your very self. Make us one body in you, living into the mystery of your goodness and mercy, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated for announcements. Today we are decorating in here and in there, and I, I don't know if there's anywhere else, for Christmas. So if you would please stay and help us, we'd really appreciate it. We've got everything from climbing ladders and bringing down the heavy stuff to sitting and sorting ornaments. So there is literally a job that anybody and everybody can do. Please stay and join us. And then right afterwards, community group is meeting, and we have a craft. So if you haven't even ever been a part of community group, but you would like to, do a craft, join us after the decorating. Next Sunday, we have our Advent luncheon and bake sale. And uh, I didn't know if there was anything Kelly wanted to say about that. Oh, she's doing coffee. She's already scooted out. Uh, so if you're interested and want to help, oh yes, Patty, thank you. Patty, talk to Patty about luncheon and bake sale for next week because we do need people who like to bake. We do need people who are bringing food um, and, and she's a good coordinator, so go with her. <laughs> uh, December 15th, we have our congregational meeting. And I will shorten worship a little bit so that it's not crazy long. And we'll have our congregational meeting talking about budget. And budget will be our only thing on the agenda. Woo, yes, we're so excited about budget. Um, so we'll have the opportunity to ask questions then but also you will receive the budget in your email. I believe we were supposed to, oh, we already have. We already have received it in our email, and I believe there are supposed to be hard copies out there, but I did not verify that. So if you're not an email person or you just like paper copies, there should be some out there, and if there's not, we will have them next week for your perusal. And Loa, is it okay if they contact you before the meeting with questions? Fabulous. Loa McNeese is our treasurer. The email should have had her email in it, so you can ask her questions between now and then as well. Um, stocking is um, next Sunday. Okay. If you picked up a stocking last week, uh, then they are due back next Sunday. There's a big wrapped box out there. You can't miss it, basically, as soon as you come in the door. So you can put your stockings in there. And just to be clear... There were some things that were blacked out on the paper so that you weren't buying things that were too big for the stocking. There are other people buying off of these lists, so they're getting like the hoodies and the whatever else is on there. <laughs> so you only need to worry about filling the stocking with stocking stuffers. Cool? Cool. Yeah. And you got rid of the last one? Somebody yeah. else got it? Okay. Um, cool. So stockings are due next week. For uh, midweeks in Advent this year, you know, we have not had a midweek service my entire time here, um, but we will be doing a midweek check-in, and it's loosely based on what we do with prayers and pajamas. We will gather, we'll uh, read something, a scripture, verse probably, based on what we read this past Sunday. We'll talk about that theme. We'll pray together and we'll bless each other. And the most astounding thing is that this all happens in like five to 15 minutes. It happens in five to 10 minutes with kids, even though they are very loquacious too. So five to 15 is the plan. It's 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. That's fitting my schedule. If there is another time that you all would like to do this check-in, please connect with me and we will find an alternate time for people who don't want to be that late. But the idea is to have this check-in midweek and then go to bed. It's a finishing the day sort of thing. So, uh, and then I did want to announce that our, e our newsletter went out this past week. It's got lots of information in it. One is that uh, I don't know if we advertised Christmas times before, but we have made it one Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. So I hope you will join us for that. Invite your friends and family. We'll make sure there's enough seating. 
in here um, to accommodate the fact that we should all be here in one place at one time. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Okay, it's a very exciting time. I hope you will join us next week for our theme, um, which escapes me right at the moment. Um, but we will move on in Revelation. I'll do a little less teaching next week probably and a little more actual preaching. Um, but I hope that that was helpful to you in, in sort of reorienting how we look at Revelation, shifting from fear to hope. Okay. You're also invited to our Bible study, which Bible study is focusing on the texts for the coming Sunday during this season. So we've, we've taken a break on Mark, and we're doing Revelation for these four weeks. Thursdays at 1. Okay. Please rise to receive the blessing of the God who loves you. May the God of hope guide you. May the way of peace sustain you. May the warmth of joy gather you in the name of the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. What is our mission? Go in peace. Live in hope. We will. Thanks be to God.